And he said, yeah, we're making this movie about Flannery O'Connor. And um, I've got a little crew outside. Uh, you know, Ethan Hawke's the director of it. And um, he would like to come in and see your church. Yeah. And I was like, what? You know, yeah. was he's like, here right he's now. There he's there then? He's like outside of St. Catherine yeah. Church on, on, on Main Street in New Haven? Just and, randomly and right there. Like, yeah. And, and I said, oh, of course. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then I started gushing a little bit to him. I was like, oh, his movie Gattaca is one of my favorite it's a, films. Such a, it's one and, of my favorite movies. And the morals of that movie. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. About, about uh, you know, genetic ma manipulation going wrong. And, oh, yeah. You know, designing people out of existence. And, you know, the, the film, uh, it uh, portrays this whole, like, underclass. So there's this class of people who have been born who were genetically formed to not have these different imperfections or limitations that people just naturally have. Yeah. And so the this class of people are the ones who get like the most exalted kind of po positions in the professional world. Yeah. And um but Ethan Hawke's character plays this guy who was a natural birth. You know, he was born without having been manipulated. And so he has these limitations that people just have, you know. Right. And But he dreams of being an astronaut. He yeah. wants to go to space. Like a star but oh, the yeah. only oh people, the only people admitted into the space program are these genetically modified people. Yeah. And so he ends up kind of subverting the system to get into that. And the way that he enters into that world and the way that he performs and, and the sacrifices he makes, along with the sacrifices of one of the uh, upper class manipulated people yeah. who is helping him. Achieve? Who stars that? In that? Jude Law. Yes, I it knew was, it. I knew it was it. Jude Law's first film. Gosh, really? Gattaca. I couldn't yeah. believe it's his first film. It's an amazing role. It's a Father, great I, role. This yeah. is the craziest thing. I had never heard of this movie, never seen this movie. Uma I was just in it. In yeah, it. I yeah. was just at my mom and dad's house like two months ago, yeah. three months ago, and they just happened to. My dad was watching this random movie, yeah. and, I, and I just happened to stop at the beginning and watch the whole thing. I was right. like, "This is the craziest movie I've ever seen in my life." <laughs> And then you're describing it. I didn't even remember the name of the movie until you were talking <laughs> yeah, about it. I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, my gosh, Gattaca, it yeah. is something else. Oh, it's fantastic. Isn't that's that where how, he met Uma Thurman. That's what I was yeah. going to ask. Yeah, he ended up marrying her. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I always think to this day, you know, when you see these things and, uh, you know, all these life issues that we currently have. Mm -hmm. I mean, that movie, in my opinion, it's kind of a, a very... Uh, pro human life yeah, flick. It um, is. It you is. know, I, I think all the time. What if I get a medical condition where you know my eyes don't work right? I'm wearing glasses. Right. Uh, you know, I'm I'm imperfect. Right. Um, w what What happens then? Is that going to disqualify me from right. a job in the future? And I don't mean a, even a, a disability. I mean just not being perfect. And right. It's, it's really right. that bodily. I mean, this, I mean, genetic manipulation, even at the human level, is with us. I mean, this is a thing yeah. yes. right yes. now, you know? So I think the movie was really had foresight on it's that issue. Fun. Prophetic. And um, it's a shame. I don't know why they did this, but they cut a scene. It was an epilogue. They call it a coda in the special features. Yeah. They cut an epilogue from the film before it was released, but it's in one of the special features. And it's... Um, it's just this kind of roll of names of, of very famous people from our history who would not be alive if their imperfection had been modified out of existence. You know, oh like gosh. Abraham Lincoln had oh this in, in inability or imperfection. And, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, Albert Einstein had this condition. JFK had this condition. All these people at lists. Yeah. Who yeah. we wouldn't be with if this if that film was yeah. true, and I'm telling you guys, I mean it's true to an extent yeah. now. Yes. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and so I um, I was just bowled over by that movie. It's the first movie I remember ever watching 
twice. Yeah. You know, I had rented the thing actually, and I'd watched it a second time before I returned it. It made that much of an impact on me. Yeah. And, and you think about that message of bodily perfection. Like, obviously, we all want, you know, eternal mm -hmm. life, right? Sure. And yet, when you grasp for it, when you try to take it now, like it seems to be with this mm -hmm. this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you're denying the resurrection. You're sure. denying the ability for God to grant us the perfection. Right. By celebrating the imperfections and things that make us unique mm -hmm. and actually increase our awareness of human value. I mean, think of people with special needs or right. really what we should really say is special abilities. Because yeah. they have a special ability to teach us love and right. patience and sacrifice. An ability to receive, an ability to yeah. be helped. It's yeah. a humility. And to maintain a childlike spirit of innocence. Right. Like right. all of those things are things that would give us the capacity to experience the resurrection, but right. when you grasp on perfection, you end up manipulative and I mean. Well, and gosh. you take out of life one of the core opportunities to encounter Christ, you know? I mean, we have many motivations to go to the Lord, but suffering is one of them, Yeah, you know? <laughs> and, it, and, and to take that out of the human equation, yeah. um, you know, to sterilize life like that, um, actually, that's not godly. You know, I mean, God is pure and perfect, but he's also a man, right? And so, um, you know, he was thirsty. We heard in the Sunday mass readings this past Sunday, he stops at this well for a drink, you know? You know, if I just never got thirsty because of some manipulation, you know? <laughs> I, I know that's, a, that's kind of a silly example, but still the point is, I mean, we encounter Christ so often through our suffering. Yeah. We don't want anyone to suffer. You know, I don't want anyone to suffer. But um, to know that Christ also suffered is a meeting point with him. Yeah. And why would I need God ever? Yeah. You know?